Hello gamers from around the world, this is Archimedes, the video game enthusiast from Germany with a tech focused video on the Unreal Engine 5. Ok guys, with E3 around the corner, I think it is no coincidence that on Wednesday the 26th of May, Epic provided a super interesting demo and information video on the Unreal Engine 5, cause I bet we will see in June the first games in action running in the UE5. Of course I link the source in the description down below, but be aware, the original video from Epic is targeted targeted for developers. They are introducing developers to the Unreal Engine 5's new tools and showcasing some of the capabilities of that engine. Now in this video I am going to try and break the presentation from Epic down into terms that a regular gamer can understand, so that we all can appreciate the engine and get excited for some Unreal Engine 5 games. And by the way, Epic has shown some real time footage running on the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 during that demo. And that's why I will also talk in this video about what that technology technology actually means for upcoming games on our consoles. But first, I want to welcome you to my channel and ask you for a small favor. If you watch this video and end up enjoying yourself, then please consider to hit the like and subscribe button and maybe even turn on the notification bell to not miss out on future content. This doesn't cost you anything, but it helps my channel more than you think and I would greatly appreciate your support. Ok, but now let's dive into the latest Unreal Engine 5 demo. Epic named this demo Valley of the Ancient and the main character character in that demo is very familiar cause it is the girl from the premiere of the Unreal Engine 5 from summer last year. As I mentioned earlier, some of the footage that they have shown has been labeled as running on the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 and they specifically mentioned in the beginning of their demonstration that the demo was specifically targeted for next gen hardware specifications. So the Unreal Engine 5 is built from the ground up with the specification of our beloved current gen consoles in mind. But obviously such a famous engine like the Unreal Engine is going to scale across a multitude of devices. Ok, but what did they actually show? They talked a lot in the video about a couple of UI features of the engine and how the engine helps developers to easily bring assets into their projects. But I want to focus here on the stuff that they have talked about that is actually interesting for us gamers. And the first thing is of course another demonstration of their Nanite technology. That technology was introduced already last summer, but this time they gave a few ideas what this virtualized geometry technology actually means for us gamers. With the Nanite technology, texts just don't get blurry anymore when you get very close to objects, so developers can actually squeeze in every scene of a game everything the human eye can actually perceive. When an object is rendered, its surface is typically divided into a multitude of triangles. With the Nanite technology, they can now render each individual object with millions of triangles with without sacrificing performance. In this view here they have shown all the individual objects in that particular scene and each object is rendered with 1 to 2 million triangles. This allows for super detailed and rich environments that we have never seen before. In addition to that they introduced a technology they called temporal super resolution which is basically a new anti-aliasing technology that is used to smoothen out edges so that edges of objects do not get that flickering and that pixelated look anymore. Anymore. According to the developers, this can create the impression of a 4K image at the rendering cost of a 1080p resolution. Now if you think about games, this is really good news. Developers can now actually use what is available in the GPU not just to bump up the resolution. They can now focus their resources on better lighting effects, better particle effects, better AI and so on without sacrificing image quality. So besides that Nanite technology, the Unreal Engine 5 introduced a new lighting technology called Lumen. This is a technology that allows for dynamic full global illumination. Ok, but what does that actually mean for us? When it comes to lighting it gets rather complicated. Lighting is typically pre-baked into games, meaning developers have to say where the light sources are in that particular scene and where that light sources cast their light and the respective shadows of the objects in the scene. Now this works perfectly fine when considering a static scene, but as soon as a light source is moving, lighting becomes different difficult and that's why it's so important to have dynamic lighting technologies. The best of course would be ray tracing, but ray tracing is very hardware demanding and so the lighting technology in the Unreal Engine 5 is a good compromise that allows for movable aka dynamic lighting but with very good results without being as hardware demanding as ray tracing. By the way, the Unreal Engine 5 of course supports ray tracing as well. 
Okay, what else did they show in their demo? They talked a lot about mega scans. This technology has been already introduced in the Unreal Engine 4, but now they announced that Quixel, a company that is specialized in scanning all kinds of surfaces and providing super high resolution textures, are now integrated in the engine and all their assets can be used in the games. That Quixel library is now implemented into the engine, which is actually quite interesting because that allows especially smaller developers to now use utilize these super detailed and high resolution assets. What was also interesting is that Epic talked about how the Unreal Engine 5 is now streaming its assets from a certain level into the memory pool of the system. This is interesting when you move through a respective level. Obviously you cannot load in a giant open world the entire world into the memory pool of your console or your PC. Certain aspects of the level have to be loaded in and others have to be deleted out of the memory system. And Epic has introduced a super Super easy system for developers to introduce a certain radius around the character to define what is actually loaded into the memory pool. That kind of reminded me a little bit about when Microsoft talked about sampler feedback streaming for their Xbox Series consoles. That is a technology that tells the developer or the engine what can actually be seen by the player in a certain scene and only loads those assets into the RAM. So I'm particularly excited to see what the combination of the Unreal Engine 5 streaming technology can do in combination with sampler feedback streaming. Okay, in addition to that, Epic talked a little bit about the animation system of the engine and how developers can now tie animations to the environment so that characters, for instance, know when a surface has a bump or something like that. Developers can now also use a technology called motion warping that allows developers to easily define where, for instance, the hands or the feet of a character land on the terrain. This makes it especially easy for smaller developers to do proper animation work really quickly. And last but in no way least, Epic updated the audio engine and gave it a complete overhaul. They introduced a technology called Metasounds that lets developers combine and overlay and influence sound samples on all kind of audio levels. That allows developers to easily create their own unique sound, for instance like this sound here of a laser beam. Okay, but with that I want to wrap it up. This was an impressive demonstration of the Unreal Engine 5 and what was really interesting to me is that they have shown at the very beginning of the demonstration the engine running on the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. That really shows that Epic is putting a lot of focus on these new consoles. So we know that Sony is heavily investing in Epic. They recently invested 250 million dollars into the company. So we can expect them to use the Unreal Engine more often. As of today, I only know of one PlayStation Studio that is using the Unreal Engine and that would be Ben's Studios, but I bet that this will change in the future. For the Xbox, this engine is a true powerhouse engine and that's because especially across the Xbox Game Studios, a lot of studios are using Unreal. We know of at least 12 studios that are working on in between 15 to 20 titles running in this engine. So it's particularly interesting to see this UE5 demo because it shows what we can expect in the next couple of years from the Xbox Game Studios. By the way, Epic has announced that as of today, all developers can download an early access build for this new engine for free and the Unreal Engine 5 will get its official and full release early 2022. The Unreal Engine 5 will be fully compatible to the Unreal Engine 4, so it is easy for developers to bring their projects that they are working on right now in the Unreal Engine 4 forward to the Unreal Engine 5 with no extra work. And now I want to come to an end of this video. I hope you found this demo as interesting as I did and I can't wait to hopefully see the Unreal Engine 5 in action during E3 in a few weeks in a couple of games. And with that I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did so, please do not forget to hit the like and subscribe button as well as the notification bell and consider sharing this out to other gamers. I would greatly appreciate it. And let me know in the comments below, what do you think of the latest UE5 demo? Which Unreal Engine 5 game are you looking forward to the most? And besides here on YouTube you can also hit me up on Twitter where I share a lot of opinions and gaming discussions. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I see you the next time and game on!